Ron, now uh, you've been president of uh, Toys R Us North America for about 15 months now. Uh, and when I think of Toys R Us, I sort of think of their heyday as being in the 80s and 90s, after which they got into uh, some severe trouble. Uh, could you sort of take us through the history of Toys R Us uh, and talk about the issues as you see them today and what, in fact, that you are, are doing about it? Well, Toys R Us is a, is a great story. Uh, it's, uh, I think, a great turnaround story. Toys R Us, as many um, uh, business students may uh, have studied, was the first uh, category killer. It was the first big box retailer before Home Depot, before Best Buy, before Lowe's, before all the big box guys, there was Toys R Us. And in the 80s and, and 90s, Toys R Us fundamentally rolled up the toy industry. They had bigger boxes, more interesting, more stuff in them, more promotional clout, and they really grew their business by rolling up the small mom and pops uh, around the country and, and doing it better. Um, along the way, they kind of lost focus. So as they were kind of replicating their, the old big box format, people like Walmart and Target and Costco and Sam's Club came along the way and changed what it meant to be a category killer. And um, really um, used toys and holiday um, as a, a way to attract mom to the store. So a, a Target that might have 80 feet of toys in April might have 240 feet of toys in December. And the same with Walmart. And of course, Costco and Sam's Club simply bulk them out. So while all this was happening, Toys R Us um, was kind of inwardly focused. And they went through some hard times starting in about 2000. So from 2000 to 2005, really had declining comps. And uh, the US operation in particular uh, really suffered dramatically, probably declined about 20% to 25% in total volume. Uh, they were taken private uh, in July of 2005 by um, Bain Capital, uh, KKR, and Vornado. Um, and the focus on the turnaround uh, really has been the U.S. operations. And I came in in July of 06 to really focus on the U.S. operations. And the whole story here is in, in fixing that uh, part of the business because um, the franchise operations are running great. Uh, Canada and Europe are very strong operations, and Japan is in, in solid steads. So it's really about fixing the U.S. operation and, and making that more appealing uh, to the U.S. customer base. So what we've done uh, at Toys, you know, first year was really focus on the fundamentals. It's execute better inventory management, more control on pricing, you know, uh, clean the stores, clean and bright, you know, get the bathrooms clean, really basic stuff. In year two, it's been about more sophistication in leadership, more sophistication in promotion, and, and, and doing a little bit with the brand, um, and, um, and even better uh, inventory management. It's really a focus on the, base, on the basics, and kind of uh, putting the basics of you know, just kind of rudimentary retail management into the U.S. operation. In the first year, we improved um, operating margins by about $250 million. Um, really just through better man inventory management and better uh, pricing management. And it was about getting focused on the right customer, not responding to everything the competition did, and knowing uh, your position in the marketplace. It seems to me that in the toy business, most of the, the revenue action is towards the end of the year around the holiday period. And at that time, you have Walmart and Target, who are key competitors, both doubling the amount of square foot they give to toys. How do you deal with that? Yeah, it's really focused on the fundamentals. Um, if we have 40,000 square feet of toys and, and things for kids, um, Target and Walmart can't really compete with that. They can only compete on price on a very small part of the assortment. So it's really about getting uh, the story about authority out and getting the story about if you want to find it, uh, when it's hard to find, which is the week before Christmas, you're going to find it at Toys R Us. So be in stock on the right things. Tell a story about authority. And frankly, don't overreact to um, price competition in the marketplace. If a competitor takes Monopoly and sells it below cost, that's one game out of a wall of uh, about 60 feet of games we have. We don't have to take the whole game industry down. We only have to compete on Monopoly and then show them that we have every type of Monopoly in the world when they come into the store. It's really about being focused on what you're good at, which is about authority and having the depth and breadth of assortment and not getting caught up in, in somebody else's game. If you play your own game, you're going to win. What then was the extent of the decline at Toys R Us? Uh, you talk about them being uh, inwardly focused. Could you sort of explain what you mean by that? Yeah, I think it was really about um, management that got um, excessively focused on um, 
if, if you will, themselves as opposed to the customer. You know, the fact that, well, the toy industry is a little bit tough, so kind of gave themselves an excuse not to get out and compete. You know, Walmart's adding 150 or 200 stores a year, and Target's adding 50 stores a year, so it's not our fault. You know, um, at, at, at Toys R Us, we like to say we're not victims. You know, you can't be a victim and win in this game. You have to look for the places that you can win. So look out, look at the customer, figure out what she wants, and, and, and try to compete on that basis, not on the basis of a, uh, a single um, attribute such as price. Clearly there have been changes at the top at Toys R Us. Uh, Jerry Storch was brought in from Target. Uh, you were brought in from Best Buy. Is, was it just a matter of, of leadership changes at the top, or has, have there been a wholesale change of management throughout the organization? The, the most dramatic management change has been at the officer level, and I would say that somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of the officers in the company have, have been released, replaced, at least in the U.S. operation and Toys R Us corporate. Um, post Jerry coming, there's uh, one member of the executive committee that, that is with us, that's Deb Derby, who used to run HR, and now she's the president of the babies division, running a great business. Other than that, we've replaced the entire executive committee of the company. In the U.S. Toys operation, uh, I would say of uh, vice president and above, we replaced probably 80 to 90 percent of the officers in the organization. And in order to, um, you know, we, one, of the, one of the things that I learned at, at Sony is a Japanese expression, the fish rots from the head. You know, if you want to really change an organization, you have to change the head and then work underneath it. And um, I would say that in most cases, uh, the changes that we've had to make have been good. You know, we may have made one or two mistakes and you know, letting an officer go that uh, probably could have stayed, but by and large, those changes have been good. We've attracted high quality talent from across the retail industry, from Target, from Disney Brands, from Limited, from Home Depot, um, you know, across the spectrum of, of retail. Uh, we've a uh, acquired great talent from across the spectrum of education, you know, Harvard, Columbia, Cornell, um, across the board, uh, very talented team we've uh, managed to develop here. When you were at uh, Sony and then again at Best Buy, you were working in a public company where you had many shareholders and you had to worry about boards of directors. Uh, now, essentially, you've got three owners. Um, could you say something about the dynamics on the one hand of the, mar the traditional marketing part of your job, worrying about consumers, revenues, and that sort of thing, and on the other hand, dealing with those three owners who I imagine are, are really pretty interested in uh, getting a return for their investment. Yeah, we have a very active owner base with uh, Bain, KKR, and Vornado. And I think the contrast between um, Sony and Best Buy and where we are today is pretty dramatic. And the number one issue is these owners or these board members are very involved uh, in the strategic decisions of the company. Uh, as opposed to having a board meeting once a quarter, we fundamentally meet with them monthly and we have a lot of interaction in between. Um, there's positives to that in that they bring a tremendous amount of knowledge uh, to the organization. Um, both Bain and KKR have great consulting arms and Vornado is arguably one of the finest real estate companies in America. So you have tremendous resources. You also have people who are very active and you have to, you have to manage that. You have to be able to communicate well to them, let them know what you're thinking about and, uh, and get their buy-in on the big strategic issues. One of the, uh, the charges, I guess, against uh, private equity is that uh, they can be uh, very short-term focused. Uh, have you seen this in your dealings with your current owners, or is there a sort of a long-term vision for Toys R Us that they buy into and are fully supportive of? It's actually not my experience. I've, I've had one or two conversations that felt very short-term, but when you show results and you show the right long-term vision, you really get them bought in. Um, all, of our, uh, all of our owners, um, I feel like, are, are with us through the midterm. They're not looking at one event horizon and, and, and jumping out. So I really haven't felt that. Uh, on occasion, you'll feel uh, that kind of tension. But frankly, um, I probably got more of that uh, with uh, public board interactions than I get with this board. This is not a board that worries about the quarter. It's a board that much more worries about what's the three-year horizon or the four-year horizon. Of course, knowing that they're investors um, um, and, and they have a horizon, uh, but it's not a, gee, we've got to make the quarter, so how much labor are we going to cut this, this month? I don't get that kind of pressure. Will Toys R Us eventually go public? 
Um, I believe that, um, that we're in the, the middle of what will be considered one of the great turnarounds in retail history.